What's up, guys? It is a great morning on Christmas Eve, and uh, it's going to be a good day. Um, but I woke up this morning, and I was thinking about all those wrestlers that are getting ready to head out to college, and uh, they're looking for you know a college that's going to fit them. And probably, truth be told, this this was one of the hardest decisions in my entire life. Um, just a little bit of my background and, and kind of my recruiting journey and process. And essentially, um, it wasn't until late my junior year, um, the year before I had a real good showing at Fargo. And, um, and then it was late junior year after a little bit later in the summer, um, when I started getting recruited and, um, University of Oregon, uh, first saw me, a guy by the name of Chuck Kearney. He was great a great recruiter uh, back when the University of Oregon had their program and uh, he had met up with me at a few different wrestling tournaments recruited me pretty hard and then um, shortly after that um, I I got recruited um, to actually you know go to their school instead of just talking to me face to face and so he brought me on a trip and a visit and I had been you know some other schools had reached out to me um, you know smaller schools and then uh, University of Wyoming and um, you know I'd gotten a few letters in the mail and those types of things but nothing like really serious like this and um, so I was excited and then man they took me out um, on that recruiting trip and I gotta tell you they they really kind of wined and dined me and they took me through a first class experience I even sat first class on the plane I don't know how they pulled that off but um, I was first class in the plane first time ever um, good breakfast good lunch, good dinner, um, facilities were off the charts, um, and kind of, you know, just from a wrestling standpoint, um, it seemed like, you know, it was going to have everything that I needed, uh, good coaches, passionate coaches that were, you know, they were excited about it, um, and then um, something kind of happened when I was there is um, some people had taken me out, you know, during that recruiting trip uh, to a party, and you know, so I just kind of figured this is my first party I've ever seen, uh, but I just kind of figured, oh, this is this is normal. Like this is just what happens in college. Like people go to parties. Um, so you know, I just just kind of as a recruit, just went along with the rest of the guys, and um, you know, I'm sure it was kind of instruction by, you know, who whomever, you know, make sure Levi has a good time. And uh, truth be told, that was kind of like that was a major. Uh, pitfall in my experience when I went there uh, because I wasn't a party kid I was really focused wrestler and um, had never had a sip of alcohol my entire life and so that experience was actually pretty bad matter of fact we ended up being at the actual animal house that was um, for the movie where they created the movie um, that's where the party was being held and I'm talking you know six different stories um, different rooms everywhere, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Um, it just really, really wasn't good scene. Cops were there, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, anyway, um, they kind of got me back on track, though, with, you know, the whole, the school and the wrestling and um, definitely stayed on the phone with me and kept recruiting me. Um, so I went, went, went back home, you know, slowly but surely, I was just kind of leaning towards wrestling for the University of Oregon. And... Um, Something happened, uh, you know, my parents promised they wouldn't really be a part of the whole recruiting process. Um, they really wanted me to make my own decision, which I could really appreciate. Um, but then I started, like, seeking their guidance because I was just really having a hard time. Like, uh, I didn't have a lot of options, and I was kind of leaning towards Oregon. And uh, then Boise State called, and um, Boise State, you know, said they wanted to recruit me and um, get me on a, you know, they wanted to come up and, and meet my family. So they come up and they have dinner at our table and we have, you know, the coaches are there. And so now two different programs have had dinner at our, you know, home table. And, uh, and uh, you know, both dinners went, went real well. Um, but something happened, like essentially my mom kind of noticed something that she wasn't really, you know, super excited about. Um, and it had something to do um, more with just kind of her gut feeling of you know what was kind of what was the better you know coaching scenario for me to go to uh, I'm sure both programs would have been great either way but um, 
so she started kind of like hinting towards different things and you know slowly but surely you know it, this decision started to get harder and harder because you know now I got opinions going both ways and um, uh, Boise State flies me out to Boise Idaho to take me on a recruiting trip and then they they uh, they take me on a recruiting trip and they take me hunting actually um which was really cool and i don't even think you can do that anymore uh, but they got me out onto a pheasant field um and uh, we went pheasant hunting which is what i grew up doing um so it was a great you know recruiting tactic uh, just to kind of like get me comfortable with the area and know that like this can be a second home and uh then i got into the wrestling room and holy crap they were training hard um and uh i just i really got excited about the way they were training um, it was what I was used to, and uh, I saw how passionate the coaches were with each kid and what that relationship looked like, and so slowly but surely, I was like, man, really torn, um, and then the youth in me kind of took over. The kid in me took over, and this is what I want you guys to be really careful careful of, is when I was young, I started leaning towards you know, Oregon just because they had all the cool gear, they had all the cool stuff, all the cool facilities. Even though that wasn't my personality, that wasn't my character, um, it's something I'd been seeing on TV, it's something I, you know, I was influenced by kind of the wow factor, you know, of University of Oregon. And so I woke up one morning and I was like, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to be a duck. I think I'm going to go to University of Oregon. And uh, so I was going to, I was going to make that call without even talking to my parents and I, my mom actually, this is crazy, my my mom won't be proud of this moment, but uh, maybe she will, maybe she won't, I don't know, but she, she said, uh, she said if I pick University of Oregon, like, she's going to have a really hard time um, staying in communication with me and talking to me. I was kind of like, what, like, did you just say that? You're like, I'm pretty close to my mom, and uh, she literally said, like, she, she, she probably wouldn't talk to me for, like, a week, uh, maybe longer. Uh, because she didn't want me to go to Oregon. She just had a bad feeling in her gut, um, and she didn't want me to go there, and she just thought Boise would be a better place for me. Um, so anyway, I just keep praying about it, and then I decide to. I decide one day I wake up, and it just all kind of comes together. Um, for me, it was the Lord was just kind of just kind of made it evident where I needed to go. So I decided on Boise State, and uh, I call Coach up and. Um, you know, for the University of Oregon first and let them know that I'm not going to be a duck. And, um, you know, at the time, I, I think this was pretty hard for him to hear and he was pretty confused. And um, to give you a little bit of, you know, understanding of the scholarship scenario, at University of Oregon, I was getting offered um, a 60% scholarship. And at Boise, I was getting offered a 45% scholarship. And uh, so for me, like, obviously, it was more money. Um, University of Oregon, but when I first told him no, they they countered and they said, um, you know, okay, we can offer you eighty percent, and uh, so I, you know, I said no, it's you know, it's it's kind of just where I want to go, and I had, I was really stubborn, and it was where I had set my mind. Um, so they called me back like a couple hours later, and they're like, hey Levi, we want to give you a full ride, and we'll pay for your books and everything. We're gonna give you a pension on top or I mean a stipend on top of that um, so you have a stipend every month you'll have a full ride meanwhile you know Boise State they're not going to change their offer their offer is 45 percent um, this is when the decision got super super hard um, and I started looking at a lot of different things in relationship to you know the programs and um, but I was pretty skewed by this whole thought process of money and and it, it was it's a big one it's super important we didn't my dad was a teacher, coach. My mom uh, worked uh, kind of secretary office, front office for an oral surgeon. Um, but yeah, we weren't like we weren't super wealthy or anything like that. I mean, we had four kids. They had four kids, so I have three sisters, and times times were gonna be tight. So you know, taking a full ride sounds pretty, you know, pretty interesting at this point. And uh, so I. I kind of went with more of a gut decision than anything um I kind of decided to just throw money out the door and say you know like oh well like you know people have student loans and I'll, I'll be able to pay these pay these off someday and uh went with Boise State and you know when I did that um 
the University of Oregon coach, he's probably not super proud of this. And um, if he's out there, he knows I love him, and uh, he's a good guy. He he is a good guy. But this hurt him pretty bad when I decided, you know, not to go to the University of Oregon. And he had mentioned like, I hope you get your, you know, butt kicked by by a duck every time you wrestle um, a duck. Now, because we're in the same conference, and you know, it was different words, but. Um, you know, for, for, you know, I just took it as it was and said, okay, well, I, you know, I hope, I hope the opposite, you know, obviously. Um, and that, that journey got started. I committed to Boise State and, um, started wrestling there and obviously things went really well there. Uh, we had an amazing team ranked as high as number two in the country. Uh, University of Oregon actually in their second year decided to, um, they the administration took over and basically dropped their program out of nowhere um that's really sad and um really hard and so i got to wrestle you know my whole career at boise state so i was i was grateful and it seemed like it it, it was the right decision um that being said i know like no matter where i went i i'm sure i could have been good uh, but when i was going through that recruiting process i want to share with you guys like some of the things that you really want to be aware of and, uh, you know, maybe questions that you should answer, um, anything like that. So I'm just, you know, thinking about things right now, just off the top of my head and having a cup of coffee in the morning. And, um, you know, I can remember when I went on those recruiting trips, I, I really tried to get a feel for what the coaches were like. Um, so when you're going on those recruiting trips, like, um, you, you really can't be shy. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Learn about them as people. Uh, learn about their lifestyle. Okay. Learn about you know what they do outside of the sport of wrestling. Um, you know, and then watch them interact with kids. How well do they know the kids on the team? Um, does it look like they have relationships with those kids? How how do they talk with the other coaches? Do they communicate well with the other coaches? Are they more of a dictator or are they more kind of a team unit, a family? And I think when, you, when you're looking for a program, like for me, I looked for a lot of these types of things, like really good character traits. Um, I looked for a lot of cohesiveness with the coaching staff and the kids. Um, I, I wanted to see that family element, you know, in, in the practice room where everybody's willing to go hard and they're all in it together. Um, I loved an intense environment, but also, you know, an environment that had a lot of structure. Um, I loved it when I saw coaches spending extra time with kids technically afterwards. Now looking back, I understand how important that is. Um, you can't, if, if you're in a room right now, you better be taking advantage of extra time outside the practice time uh, to learn technique. And, and if you're on a recruiting trip and you see these types of things, these are really good signs. You know, if the clock, if the clock hits, you know, five o'clock and everybody jumps out of the room takes their shoes off as fast as they can and they get in the shower and they go go home that's probably not a very good sign um so these are things that you really want to be looking for when you're watching the practice and then you know when you're going around the campus obviously there needs to be a strong focus and understanding of the academics okay it's one thing to just show you facilities uh but it's another thing if the coaches can understand like what your hopes are academically and then take you to the specific buildings meet the teachers, meet the professors, meet the kids, you know, do whatever it takes to learn a little bit about the school and the academics and what you're going to be, you know, what you're going to be immersed into because that's going to be a lot of your life. I mean, we're talking, you know, six to seven hours per day minimum of just academics. So it's a huge, it's a huge part and you don't want to miss that part. Um, you know, you, you want to see if the coaches have a vision for the future, <clears throat> not, you know, you want to see academically that vision for the future, but you also want to see it as a program. Like, what are they doing that is going to, you know, secure the program? Make sure it's, you know, it's got Olympic Training Center athletes and it's got an endowment fund and it's got, I mean, you want to hear all these things so that you can make sure, like, you're going into a program that's not just safe um but is gonna is excited about the future it's it's excited about the climb and the process um you want to you want to join on a staff that sees you as um a building block you know for their program you know you are somebody that can come in and set the history 
behind that program. I love the idea of that. Um, it's not always about just going to a program that's already history, already has a ton of history or already has a ton of tradition. Um, a lot of those types of programs are really big programs and they're great programs, you guys. Um, <clears throat> but what you'll notice is they're ran a little bit more like businesses because they can be ran like businesses. They have, you know, four deep in a lineup in one spot where, you know, if one guy's not getting the job done, it's next guy up. And it really is next guy up. It's next guy up and you're out and you're either fighting to stay in the lineup, you know, stay academically eligible, whatever your scenario is, or you're gone. You're out and you're going to another school or whatever. And so a lot of those bigger programs, they're like that. They don't have um, – they don't have that same uh, development type of coaching going on because they don't necessarily have to have it. Um, that being said, some of those best programs out there too also are really good at developing the best guys. So they take the best guys and they develop them further. So I'm not going to say they're not development coaches, uh, but I think what you'll find is when you are getting recruited and maybe you're not you know, one of the top Big Ten kids or you're not – you know, and you're looking for a school um, – you know, like like a Pac-12 school or um, ACC or SEC or something that's not like Big Ten, Big 12, then, you know, you should be thinking about some of these things I'm talking about. You know, the the cohesiveness of the, the team and the coaches and the group, um, you know, how much focus is there on the development of those kids? Um, do you see those kids finishing college in wrestling um, on like Olympic Training Center teams? Um, does the school have their own Olympic Training Center? Um, these are all things that you want to be aware of because every school should have one. Um, they should have endowment funds built up. They should have Olympic Training Centers set in place. They should have one to three Olympic Training Center level athletes training at that facility so that those kids are ingrained with their, with their college kids. All things you want to look for. If you don't see some of these things, these that would be some of the red flags other red flags you know if you meet the coaching staff and they're they're cussing and they're they're cursing and to be cool it kind of seems like or they're doing that in the room um in my experience that's not a great coaching uh style um so i i would say i would start to veer away from and make that a definite red flag right away because i i just don't think there's any place for cursing and those types of things. I, I, this is a very positive sport, and it needs to be positive and uplifting. And uh, I think that's where you get the most outcome from your kids. After all, as coaches in the corner, we're mostly motivators and cheerleaders um, in the corner, and then and then we're developing the wrestler outside the corner. Um, yeah. So when you see, start seeing these things, these are bad character traits that you probably don't want to be a part of. You hear him talking about drinking. You hear him talking about parties. You hear him taking talking about taking care of you. Um, you know, with, with the other kids, like go out and party, have a good time, major red flags. Don't, don't, you know, if they don't mention academics, if academics isn't important, major red flag. Um, yeah, I mean, those are simple things. I think sometimes you can watch the coaches and see how they coach. So if they coach in the corner and they coach all against the other kid, like he's grabbing the fingers or he's poked us in the eye or um, he's grabbing headgear or he's complaining about all these different things, this is a red flag. This is a red flag. You're, a good coach will coach his kid and they will not coach against the other kid or against the ref. So when you're seeing these things when they're coaching against the other kid or against the ref, even if they're a big name program, there's a good chance they got some all-star kids on their team and they're simply just not coaching the right way. If they would just coach their kid, they would probably be even more successful than they are. Um, so I think with a good, strong character type program, you'll see this a lot. Like they'll coach just their kids. They won't worry about the other kids. They won't disrespect the other kids. They won't disrespect the ref. They won't attack the ref. Doesn't mean they won't fight for their kid if it's a bad call. That's okay. But I think what you'll see is there's a big difference in a coach that you know has good character and is willing to to really coach his kid and not focus on all the uncontrollables. Um, so when you have a coach that focuses on uncontrollables, that's a red flag. Um, yeah, and then you know obviously with my recruiting situation on the financial side. 
I think, you know, just, just don't be afraid to ask, like, if that's the best offer for you, if that's the best scenario. Um, my Boise State coaches were really honest, and that was just the best scenario. You know, 45% was the best scenario they could give me, and it really was. I mean, we had guys that were number two in the country, um, two-time, three-time All-Americans. They took scholarship drops just so that we could get more guys in on the team. They went from, you know, 60 70% down to 45%. And when we were ranked number two in the country, almost all 10 guys in our lineup were on like 50%, um, some, a couple guys maybe a little bit more, uh, but mo nobody was on, you know, really full rides except for I think one kid. And so, you know, that's kind of, that's the scenario, you know, that is going to create championship type teams. So um, if you're coming into a development type program, a family type program, um, you got to be able to expect that, you know, it's going to be a lower scholarship um, and, you know, that's just what it takes to have a lot of good wrestlers in the room because we only get 9.9 .9 scholarships at the Division One level. Um, and so, you know, that's something to think about. And if you're looking at lower college levels, D2, D3, um, some of that's another conversation because they have a little more flexibility. Uh, but one thing that can help all you guys is it, it – is your academics. You got to clean up your academics. Like your academics can get you can get you almost full ride scholarships. Um, I, I'll bring up my brother-in-law who's my best friend, my buddy, um, and a great example of this. My brother-in-law, um, he, uh, he came from Washington and I kind of took him under my wing at Boise State University. And uh, he was my best friend who later went on to marry my sister obviously. And uh, he is still my best buddy. But when he went to college, it was really unique because he was like second and third string guy in our lineup on a really tough team. Um, but he still he stuck it out. He kept wrestling. Um, but when he came to college, his academics, I mean, he was a math guy. And his academics were so high that he was getting accepted into like NASA high school level programs. Um, and he... He 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 could have he could have really done a lot with his math career, but he really wanted to wrestle. Um, and having a good you know academic um, performance in high school changed everything for him. I mean, here I am, you know, a top ranked kid in the country on a you know forty five percent scholarship, um, paying you know student loans, you know building up student loans each year, and you know without a choice really. Um, and I had good academics, but not like really good. Um, not good enough to like get me a lot of extra money. So I got a little bit of extra money from academics, but not a lot. Um, where he came to school full ride. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't paying anything just because of his academics. He didn't have any athletic money, and he had you know all of his school paid for because he had great academics. And so you know wrestling in college it makes it a lot easier when you don't have that burden over your head. Um, that you're going to be paying student loans and things like that. So, guys, this is a long rant, 23 minutes, you know, already. And uh, I just, you know, I want to give you guys a vision for the future, uh, but also make sure that when you're looking at, you know, specific coaches and programs that you understand um, their vision for the future and what their program is going to look like in, you know, year, two years, three years, what your relationship would look like if you were wrestling there. Um, I know it's one of the toughest decisions that you're ever going to have, um, and, it, and it's not easy, um, but I want the best for you guys. Um, no matter what you do, um, go all in. No matter what you do, um, once you make that commitment, um, trust the process, you know, trust the coaches, um, and if you've made the right, if you made the right commitment, great things are going to happen, but go all in. It's a lifestyle. It's a choice, guys. Go all in. Take care. Thanks for listening.